All right, joined here by David today, the paddock prince on our picks.horseracingnation.com, who has been giving out plenty of fire selections as well as some winning tickets. David, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, I'm Paddock Prince. You can find me on horseracingnation.com under expert picks. Um, it should be a good weekend of racing with these all turf and all dirt pick five. So I'm looking forward to diving in. Me too. Absolutely. And you've been giving out some winning pick sixes, rainbow sixes at both uh, the Gulfstream Park and then the mandatory payout days at Santa Anita. So definitely want to pay attention to what you have to say because you're giving out plenty yeah. of winners. Got lucky a few times. Right. Um, but jumping right into the all turf pick five that's going between the two tracks, 12% takeout and dollar minimum for both of these uh, all turf and all dirt pick fives. Starting off with the Palm Beach Stakes at Gulfstream Park in race seven is like one of the all turf one. Who do you like in here? Um, I like Royal Spirit on the cutback. He ran a mile on a 16th last time out in the kid and joy and he has enough tactical speed to sit right off the pace and he gets IRAD now, which obviously doesn't hurt. Not that Paco did anything wrong last time out. I just think he'll sit a good trip, and he's actually one of my key plays in the sequence. Number six, Royal Spirit. Yeah, he's absolutely a contender. Um, I love the race that he ran last time out. Um, I'm a little interested in the number eight, Mom's Moon, who is going to have to get quite a bit faster. But breaking his maiden last time out, setting those fast fractions at, what was he, 42 to 1 or something from post-12? Yeah, he was also um, in the 12 hole, which is almost impossible to win from and at Goldstream going two turns. Right. And big pedigree on this guy. He's a have to analyze it. And the horse that he beat, La Makina, came back, ran a super game race on the last mandatory payout day and mm -hmm. set pretty fast fractions in there too. And I like that um, Hermio stays aboard. I think that he's going to be faster early than the two coinage and some of the others in here. So he might be the real speed of the speed. And I think he could just take them all the way. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I actually have him in my exacta plays underneath. I have him second and right with. I think Red Danger is also dang, Red Danger is also dangerous. I, there was an interview before his last race that Brian Lynch kind of said he was probably going to need one, and he should get more pace to run at today than he got last time. So I think Red Danger number nine is also dangerous. Yeah, definitely an open race. Um, I'll be curious to see what they do with Coinage. I don't think he's getting the lead today after some pretty slow fractions um, last time out and in his other races. So he's not going to get yeah. the same setup that he got before when he was doing well. Um, but no, I'm on. a little against Coinage. Yeah, me too. Um, moving on to race number nine uh, from Gulfstream Park. That's going to be the second leg of this sequence in the Honey Fox. Uh, I'll go first. My topic in here is going to be the five bipartisanship. This is a horse that I really liked a lot last time out in the Pegasus World Cup filly and mare turf. Um, and she was breaking from post 11, so another wide trip in there. She did have a little bit of traffic. Um, she wasn't quite, you know, going to ever win that race. But I think that maybe at this time out, breaking a little closer to the inside, having a little more pace ahead of her, she could be possibly interesting in here. Um, of course, Jouster, we know what her game is. She's going to go to the front, the number three. And I think the seven alms is super interesting after a really great effort last time out. Yeah, I can see bipartisanship for sure. She, the horses she ran against last time out, nobody was beating Regal Glory that day. And there, like you said, there wasn't a ton of pace. I'm actually a little – I'm using Jouster in here, but I'm a little against Jouster. Her figures are – I can't tell if this horse is – I think she's going to have to have run her best race off the layoff. I mean, she's obviously the speed of the speed, but her her figures are just okay. But I wouldn't obviously not be surprised with Pletcher at Gulfstream going a mile on the turf that she could wire him. I actually like the eight Wakanaka, if I'm saying that correctly in here. She comes also comes out of the turf, and that was the first time she ever went that far. And I in Europe, if you look at a race, if she was strictly a six furlong mile horse, I think the cutback and distance could help her. And not that Umberto did anything wrong last time, but I think having um, Jose Ortiz second time in America could definitely help Wakanaka, if I'm saying that correctly again. But I like the eight horse in this race, but I do think this race is pretty wide open, and your top pick has a big chance. And I'm going to use Jouster, but I'm kind of. It's kind of a fade to me at a short price because I'm sure she'll be over bet. Right. I think there's plenty more interesting ways you could go in here. But like you said, won't be surprised if she gets the win. Um, moving on to the third leg. Now we're at Santa Anita in the Buena Vista, which is a grade two. Uh, who do you like in here? This race really confused me. I, I'm kind of I don't have the morning line yet, but I'm going to guess keeper. I'm going to take the three keeper of time. I guess she's going to be a price in here. I would assume so. This race has a lot of. Um, a lot of horses I don't want at short prices. And I think her race on the poly last time out was okay, but good enough. And I think it's interesting that Brendan Walsh is shipping her all the way to California. 
gets Mike Smith should be able to save ground on the rail and hopefully make one run. So I'm going to go with keeper of time, number three. Yeah, I definitely looked at that horse, and I think the ones that are coming in with good efforts on the synthetic are definitely horses to consider when they get back to the turf that might be their preferred mm -hmm. surface. Um, going to Vegas is going to take money. She's a My Racehorse horse, and she makes sense, but I'm a little questioning her form after the Breeders' Cup Philly Mare turf because she – she was going well on the front end. She just totally stopped and hit a wall in there. So yeah. I wonder what's going to happen with her. And she's going to take some pace pressure because the five legs galore has early speed as well. I really liked her effort on the downhill turf last time out. She has really high sp fire speed figures. She's one at the mile distance. She's seven for 12 lifetime. And I think I'm, I'm probably going to take a pretty hard look at the five legs galore. But with the pace dynamics in here, it makes sense for somebody else to come scoop them both. Yeah, legs galore also is five for seven in Santa Anita and with a second. And so she's hit the board six out of seven times. And yeah, on with going to Vegas, I, I got her in there, but I'm kind of with you. She's going to have to chase legs galore, which would be a hot pace. And she's going to have to hold off the closers. But it is, this is where Pratt went. And I always kind of pay attention to where Pratt goes, especially in stakes races. So I think Pratt going to this horse is obviously means the horse is probably doing well enough in here. And But I could. I, I like you said, going to Vegas is gonna be super over bet as well because my racehorse, and I'm sure she'll be the morning line favorite to begin with. Right, right, and can't leave Flavia Pratt out on the turf ever. So good point no. in that. Um, heading back to Gulfstream Park for race 13, the Here Comes the Bride. This was a pretty wide open race to me. Um, you have a lot of maiden winners, a lot of younger horses that are kind of untested in here. Um, I'm going with the number 12 on top. Uh, this horse I thought would sit fairly close. Uh, this is a horse that Gaffleon rode in the Wait a While Stakes, but now gets Joel Rosario back on uh, and third on debut to Lady Danae at Saratoga. And this was um, a race that I actually was really interested in her in that race. So I'm curious to see what she's doing now, making her fourth lifetime start. But that you could go mischievous kiss seems like a contender invading from new york for ma and has a turn of foot um one of the chelsea flower stakes the four is a half to spanish queen so has some good pedigree um and stalks the pace and comes in off a maiden win i feel like you kind of go anywhere in here yeah la marina too the her maiden race the horse that came second bubble rock was the stakes winner at belmont and ran the breeders cup before just absolutely blowing the brakes so that horse is running some good races for sure I'm taking a little chance with Diamond Wow in here, the three horse getting back on the turf. I really think putting the blinkers on, I think they're just going to send this horse. She projects to be the fastest horse on paper to begin with. But, you know, second off the layoff back on turf, I'm going to try to wire with um, Diamond Wow. But this is honestly, I, out of all the races, I think this is probably the most wide open race of any of them. I could see two, three, four, five. 9 12 i could see any a lot of horses winning this race and i think mischievous kiss is probably the best horse in the race but it's off a long layoff i'm not shouldn't say a long layoff three four month layoff and i'm not going to take her at a short price i guess assuming that she'll probably be one of the top choices but i'll definitely be using her yeah yeah i agree with you i think this is probably the most wide open of either sequence either the turf or the dirt and this is definitely a spread race for those pick five tickets um but moving on to close out the all turf pick five with the frank e Kilro mile at santa anita i'm on the six law professor in here i love this horse in his last two races and the one that got rained off the turf where he won and then when he was second last time out to express train I picked him in there. I thought he ran a really good race to a very good horse right now. Express Train is in raging form at the moment um, in the San Pasquale. Um, now he gets back on the turf, which honestly might even be his preferred surface. He's in great form, and I think he's a big contender in here. Yeah, I couldn't agree more about him. I actually have him second in this race. He's really improved this year it just as a whole on both. Sir. It's, you know, in the last four months, whatever you want to say, in the last four months, really improved. He did lose the Express Train last time out, but his turf win was very impressive with Jose Ortiz. And I think he's just an overall better horse now than he was last year. So I think getting back to the turf and they had to try the San Pasquale last time after winning the um, Mathis mile on dirt. So I think that was the right. And he obviously ran second. So he ran a good race. But no, I'm definitely using him. I like count again in this race. I think there's going to be a lot of pace in here. And he kind of closed into a race last time out. He made a big wide move. And I think with more pace in this race, second off the layoff count again, will be a major player in here. But I'm definitely using Law Professor. And I think. Let me find it. I think Space Traveler is going to be a horse, the eight horse. It's going to be super over bet. He was one of those horses that everybody was tweeting about last time out who got the bad trip against Colonel Liam 
he can win the race and I'll use him, but I think he's going to be a super overbet horse coming out of that race in the Pegasus. Yeah, I hear you on that. And, you know, Colonel Liam, great horse, obviously winner of back-to-back -back Pegasus turfs, but I think that any horse coming out of that race now facing a horse that was second to express train is kind of like, well, of course, like if this horse mm -hmm. takes money, it makes a lot of sense, but yeah, I, I think that it's between kind of those three that you mentioned in there. Um, moving on to the all dirt pick five. This one starts at Santa Anita in race four, which is the grade two San Carlos stakes. And I think the one Brickyard ride, obviously the horse to beat, um, has early speed, winner last time out at the Tis Now. I used him last time um, in that as a single, in that sequence. Uh, I, he just makes a lot of sense in here. I'm sure he's going to be one of the favorites, if not the favorite, but I, I couldn't look too much past him. Yeah, no, and I wouldn't be too worried about the quick turnaround. That was basically a workout last time out against Cowbreds. He, he was winner of this race last year. And he's definitely a major player and probably probably is the one to beat. I'm actually going to go with eight rings here on the cutback. I know he's 0 for 4 at the distance, but he's a much better horse than what he was when he was running at these distances. And he has a lot more natural speed, it appears, since since he stretched out. So I'm hoping he can sit somewhat close to Brickyard Ride. I know nobody will be super close to him, but I'm hoping he can sit, sit second. And if Brickyard Ride, ride wires him, I wouldn't be surprised. I want to go with eight rings here. And I think I can't, I don't know what to do with Cezanne. I, his what race in the um, Corona Gold was a massive pace meltdown. And it's his best figure by far. But outside of that, he's just been okay. His last was a layoff, so he needed it. But I don't know. Cezanne's kind of a hype horse, but I'm not really a big fan of his. So I'll probably use one six and a little bit of four in here if it's like a B ticket or something. Yeah, I think eight rings is definitely dangerous. Like you said, he's improved a lot. And I think that he is meeting a distance that he prefers quite a bit. So he's definitely a player as well. And he's going to get the right kind of trip behind Brickyard Ride. Um, moving on to the 10th race at Gulfstream Park, which is the second leg of the sequence, the Gulfstream Park Mile. What are your thoughts on here? I think this is a two horse race. I think it's between the three and the four. I'm taking Fearless in this race because I think it'll be a better price, but I think Speaker's Corner is no doubt the horse to beat. But if you watch Fearless's last race, he was a big horse and he was stuck on the rail and he was very, very hard ridden at the beginning of the race and finally got, once he got on the outside halfway through the race, he started to move up. I think his post position is much better for him this time out for this type of horse running style he is. And I think the pace is going to be hot in here. There's a couple horses off the layoff, like Injunction. And um, New York traffic and a couple other horses, I think, could keep the pace interesting. But if Speaker's Corners wins, I wouldn't be surprised. But I think you'll get a better price on Fearless and look, looks to be a two-horse race to me. Yeah, absolutely. I think that New York traffic is kind of the one you want to use underneath of both of them, kind of like, uh, you know, Pegasus type of matchup, like, oh, it's these two, and then everybody mm -hmm. else is just running for third. Um, mm -hmm. I think Speaker's Corner wins in here. He's already beaten – Fearless, but you know, fearless has every reason to improve off of that effort. And I think that if he is going to be speaker's corner, now is probably the time to do so. I don't blame anybody for taking him on top. And I think New York traffic's a good horse, but I would don't I just don't think he's better than either of these two. So I would no, I, I agree with you for sure. Yeah. Uh, moving on to race number six from Santa Anita, the San Felipe. This is a grade two derby prep. Who do you like? Um, this race wasn't very interesting to me. I th I think the two Bafferts, I'm going to take Armagnac. I think he he looked really good stretching out in distance. He he should be. I don't know if he'll get the lead over Forbidden Kingdom, but I think he'll be right there because Forbidden Kingdom's obviously stretching out to two turns. Doppelganger's last race was kind of odd. It was Bafford had five, a three out of five in there, and he kind of he did he improved off his obviously for Ben King was a good sprinter but he didn't really show me a lot I wouldn't be surprised if he won though because the three and the six might hit heads early here but I'm going to take Baffert's horse Armagnac who really looked good on the stretch out and distance and the third place horse in that race came back to break his mate and at aqueduct on the trainer switch to Bill Mott last week so I think the race looks pretty live Nice. I like it. I, yeah. The question for Forbidden Kingdom is stretching out. Um, if he can carry that speed of route of ground, I think that he's he's going to take money. Obviously, my racehorse horse uh, makes a lot of sense in here. If he can stretch out, he's the pick. He does have to answer that question, though. And I think, like you said, players that already have that will be a little bit of uh, better odds to bet on. Moving on to the Fountain of Youth Stakes. Mo Donegal scratching out with a fever. The 13 Galt draws in. I'm really interested in Galt drawing in in here. I think that he showed a much better effort last time out in the Holy Bowl. 
not that he was ever winning that race, but I think that he was kind of like, oh, Songbird's little brother. And, you know, there's a lot yeah. of hype about that, but he hadn't really shown anything on the track. I think he did show a lot of improvement in that start. He's shown that he's versatile. He's tactical. He can go to the front. Um, I'm really interested to see what he does in here. I don't know if yet if he's going to be my top pick. I think this is a pretty open race for a lot of horses to mm -hmm. step up prove obviously simplification if he breaks he's the one to beat um and it has to prove that he was deserving of that excuse last time out to not get the job done yeah gold is interesting if that horse was not in post or, or post 12 now with the scratch i would probably really consider that horse he's obviously really like stretching out two turns on the dirt his first two races he didn't get to do that and i agree with you he has really improved but that post is just not good for him regardless of how he breaks um, I like Emmanuel in here. He might be the sucker horse because it's Todd Pletcher, two for two. Everybody's going to, you know, look at him stretching out to the amount of 16th. He's two for two. Like I said, he's improved his buyer points, 11 points. But he kind of just looks like a horse that he really, every time they ask him in the lane, he just kind of takes off. I think he's got enough speed to sit right on the pace. And like you said, if simplification, simplification does not break in this race, I think there's a chance Emmanuel's right on the lead. <laughs> I think you make a good point. Another horse that I just want to touch on briefly, I don't think he's winning, but is one that I would use underneath in uh, tries and probably supers is the number five, Dean Delivers. I don't know that I've seen a horse get more unlucky uh, versus Todd Pletcher horses and just be mm -hmm. a super horse. Yeah running his race and hitting the board and you have to admire the consistency. So I feel like he's got a big race in him. I don't think this one is it, but I think that he's a horse that I definitely want to keep an eye on moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. He really improved last time. And I know they went quick up top. I think Pletcher had the um, two favorites in that race as well. And they really, they really went quick. So I can't tell if it was more of a pace dynamics thing that he fell no good trip or he's really improved, but I would not be surprised if he really improved here and was right there at the end. All right, and then to close out, we're going back to Santa Anita for race number 11, the Santa Anita Handicap, handicap the Big Cap, uh, Grade 1, heavy hitters in here with Express Train and Stiletto Boy. Did you use either of those two or try to look elsewhere? No, I wish I was creative in this race. I think Express Train is just – I know he's 0 for 3 at the distance, but he lost in this race by half a length to a nice horse and idle, so I don't really think the distance is a problem for him. If Sire Union Rags obviously can get horses – going a mile and a quarter, so I was going to take him. The only horse, I think, that has a chance to really upset this horse is Why Paul Why? Why Why Paul Why? He gets a trainer switch to Michael McCarthy, and I'm not a big gold rail bias type person, but the the last race he ran in was that week and month time span when that was the aqueduct had that massive gold rail, and he was stuck three wide the entire time, and First Constitution ran like a massive figure for him, and he was on the rail, obviously, the winner. So I think there's a chance why, why, Paul, why on the trainer sitch could be very dangerous. I also think he could be the speed in the race. So outside of then, I just express train and why, why, Paul, why. Can't even say that name because it's so confusing. Um, Stiletto Boy, I think, he never really wins. He hasn't had the best setups. I mean, life is good. He's lost to Flyline, Nick's Go, Medina Spirit all wire to wire types, but I just feel like he's a good horse to use underneath. He's a very consistent and nice horse, but I mean, I just, he's one for his last or two for his last 12. And I just see him as more of an underneath horse. Yeah, I agree on that. I think it's express trains race to lose on top. I think Stiletto boy comes running for a piece of it, but I just, I don't see him beating express train here. Obviously, like you said, he's faced so many good horses, but here's another one. And I think that he's going to be happy in a couple races when these heavy hitters are not in there to take the limelight away from him and he can get, you know, his grade one type of win. But mm -hmm. that, uh, that pretty much sums it up. I know that you'll have some awesome picks on our website, picks.horseracingnation.com for people to follow along with your tickets for both of these sequences. And I just want to say thank you so much for coming on and got a lot of great insight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. You take care. Thank you.